Hello and welcome to session nine in this online course taking you through George Spencer Brown's Laws of Form. In this session, we're going to continue looking at consequences and we're going to look at consequences eight and nine that he outlines in chapter six. These are longer than the consequences we've been looking at previously, so we'll go through them in a bit more detail. Our job is to prove consequence eight which he calls modified transposition. The demonstration is quite short. Let's have a look at it. First of all, we take the left-hand part of the um, equation and apply C1. We then take J2, our old friend, P, R, mark over 2, Q, R, mark over 2, mark over 2, and we render it P mark Q mark mark over 2 R. Then we apply C7. What does that involve? In case you've forgotten, C7 looks like this. So we're looking for three nested things. We actually have them, but we need to transpose the equation to take the A mark to the right to see them more clearly. So, in C7, the A term is equivalent to B mark C mark. The B term is equivalent to the R, that's in the next shallower, uh, the middle space, the next shallowest space. And the C term in C7 is equivalent to A mark. So you can see that if we take A, C together, we take B mark, C mark, A mark, and we transpose. And then we take B mark, well that's R with a mark on top of it, and the C is A mark on top of it, transpose those, put a mark above both, and we've got the proof. That's consequence 8. Consequence 9 is even more extended. This is to do with cross transposition. The proof is here. Now, you can see that the first part of the expression has been copied down, the second part of the expression has been copied down, but how does the next part of the expression get reduced to what we see here? in the second line. There are three steps he's put into shorthand. C1, J2, C1. It's a sequence we're going to come across more and more frequently from now on. So let's see how it works. We're at this stage of the proof. We put C1 over the two last parts of the top expression. We move the common term out, and the R always moves two divisions to the right. That gives us this. We use C1 twice, and that gives us the expression we've arrived at. X, Y, mark over 2, R, mark over 2. The next step is to use C8, and then apply that cancellation three times. How does that look? Well, this is what C8 looks like. We need to decode these terms and see how they relate to what we've got in the equation we're working with. So our A term is going to be x, y mark over 2, r, and that needs to have a cross over it. Our B term is B mark, and that also needs a cross over it. Our C term is A mark, and that also needs a cross over it, and we do mark over 3. Mark and cross are interchangeable in the system. X, Y mark over 2, R is our A term, and that gets crossed. Our R mark is our R term, and that gets a mark over it, mark over 2, and we've done the transformation. Now we apply C1 once, twice, and thrice, and we have this. We transpose the terms, 
and we have the result. The next step is to apply C2 and C1. What does this involve? Well, let's see what happens. C2 involves AB mark over 2B being equivalent to A mark B. Remember that copying the term in, and if we've got a duplicate term, cancelling it out, well, that's what happens here to the single R. Now we're going to take out that R in the middle. And then we're going to apply the cancellation, C1, and there we are. And all we have to do is transpose the terms. The next step is to apply C2 again. We're going to take the um, RxY and put it inside. And apply C6. Now, how are we going to transform the longer part of the expression to this shorter part using C6. C6 involves two separate divisions and in C6 there's a B term which is crossed and a B term which is uncrossed. Now there is an R term there but what we're left with is the A not the B. So what's going on here? Actually, I think this is a typo. You can achieve the result using C2. C2, remember, is AB mark over 2B is equivalent to A mark B. Let's look at how this can work out. Well, we can take the XY under a mark out because it's already on the outside. So that gives us R mark BA RXY mark over 3 with a mark over them. We, that R has moved to the left, the B A has moved to the centre, and the R X Y mark over 3 has stayed where it is, all under an overarching arching mark. Remember to put the R X Y mark over 3 on the outside, take the one on the inside out, and you're left with R mark B A mark over 3, R X Y mark over 3. We transpose the terms and we've got the end result. That's how I think Spencer Brown did it. And consequence 9 is proved. In the next session, we're going to look at further classification of consequences, further development of these ideas, and see where it leads. I hope you think that it's much easier than it sounds once you do it in practice, once you see the steps, and once you play with it yourself. See you next time.